hello, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, whenever you are listening to this <laughs> uh, video. Now, basically, we are looking at assembly drawings, and um, the figure on the screen is what we are going to be looking at. Um, as you can see, it's prearranged anyway. Uh, you may not always have it arranged this way, but, but it's good for interpretation as it is. So in this arrangement, you can readily see with the dimensions how the arrangements will be. For instance, you have a gap of um, 18 between these two planes, and then you have 12 plus 3 plus 3, that's 18. That tells you that this will fit in to this. And then here you have a diameter of 12. And um, if you look carefully, you're gonna see diameter of 12, which means this portion fits into this hole. And then you have a diameter of 10 here. And then at the top, you have a diameter of 10, which also tells you that this fits into this hole. So um, in assembly drawing, you are looking at the geometry uh, along with the dimensions to be able to um, uh, assemble appropriately. So basically, this has been pre-drawn. I would advise you to draw it yourself. So we have the first part, part one. We have the second part, part two. We have the third part, part three. And uh, we have it threaded at the top, which is a slight um, variation from what you have in that PowerPoint. Then slide uh, part four, which is a knot to be held onto the top of part three. So how do you go ahead to assemble this? Well, you have to go through the normal root file, new, then select assembly. Of course, you know this is where the assembly is. You go to um, standard.standardmm.iam .standard and then you tell it to create. Now we are in the assembly file, it's clean. Uh, so the first thing you are going to do when you are in this environment is to place the uh, parts you want to assemble. So you click on place. Be mindful that place has a drop down which has other components, but make sure you are clicking on place to be able to place the components which you want to put. Now, uh, of course, you can navigate to where you have drawn. Uh, normally, it will open the folder if you have made it your uh, project file, if you have selected your project file correctly. So you have part one, you can see the preview, part two, part three, and part four. You can place it one after the other, but I'm going to place the four at the same time. So I have, I've selected the four, and then I click on open. So I have it with the cursor. It's moving with the cursor. As you can see, uh, let me zoom out. So you can see it's moving with the cursor. So you click, but it's still going to be moving with the cursor. With and um, for instance, this is helpful when you have more than one uh, one occurrence of any particular part. So you can click it as many times as possible to create those occurrences. But in this case, there's just one occurrence of every part. So I'm just going to say escape. Now I have the assembly. And I have the, the parts. I can easily move the parts. All parts are movable. Um, but um, I would normally advise that for ease of assembly, so that you can readily have it assembled, or so that your parts won't just be moving arbitrarily, it's better to fix one component, uh, which will be the reference component. So I'm just going to fix this. Uh, let me. Okay, let me fix this. So you right click on it and then you say grounded. Grounded. So you can't move this any longer. No matter how you try, you can move others. So you can move others. Now I want to orientate it properly so that um, I can properly um, assemble. Let's go. I hope this will be in order. No, not yet. I want the smaller hole at the top because the holes are different. So I have the smaller hole at this. So I can make this home 
you right click on the box that's the and you say set current view as home you can fit distance but i'm going to fit to view so whenever you click on home it brings it that way now how do you assemble now because that's major reason why we are here the you assemble basically with the constraint tool here now the constraint tool is in the relationships tool so you specify the relationships between all those parts now we have the constraint now i'm going to assemble you can assemble using the mates using the uh, angle using tangents insert and symmetry now uh you should know i'm just going to demonstrate how mate works how insert works uh, basically if i were to assemble i'm just going to use insert majorly but uh, for demonstration purposes i would like to make you see how mate works now for instance you have to know which part is mating with which now this part is mating with um, the bottom part this circle which means they are in line or the surfaces are rubbing together against one another so you click on the surface you heard that sound which tells you that something has happened like the mating has occurred so if i say apply now so so if you move i'm going to escape now so that we can see the effect of that i can move this now if you, you can't really see the effect of what is happening until you have tried to make it in plane now every movement you are making no matter how you move your cursor will be in that plane which means the surfaces are aligned that's basically what you have done now that's made now but it has not fully positioned the item and um, i need to mate the holes as well so i can still use mates and then you know mate the holes for instance i can mate that circle with the bottom circle like the circle on the other surface so you had that sound again which means it has mated correctly now let's see what happens now you can only move this way as you can see and i think it's properly mated now <clears throat> um then let's see how do we uh put this in you have to know the correct position is supposed to come in from under now you can go from under there and then or perhaps let me just um show you rather than mate i'm undoing everything which i've been okay so let me just proceed um okay i have that okay now let me also use mate to put in that um the pin now i'm going to say constraint and i'm going to mate i can mate uh, axis as well you know that's the axis and i'll mate that axis as well so is it properly mated i do not think so so i've mated the axis uh, so cancel this something's wrong there so i'll say try to mint the axis so we can um, so i'll say apply now again you will see that no matter how much you how you move your uh cursor it's um going to be moving along that axis now let's see we actually need to meet this surface to the bottom surface so um let's see we'll select the bottom surface here right and then this other surface and you can see it's mated now so let's say apply now i don't expect it to move but if you are observant you can see that it appears as if the pin is moving in a circular motion now now home again we are left with the uh, bolts or the knot rather so i'll still use mates and um, 
I would meet, I would love to meet the axis first. Okay, apply. So we'll see how it moves. I move up and down along the axis. But now let's meet uh, surfaces. So I'm going to click on constraint and then click the bottom surface or the circle. I could click the circle as well uh, rather than the surface and then click on this surface. So I have a metered surface and I say apply. And again, you can see it's moving in a circular motion, no up and down motion and things like that. So basically you have moved, you have made uh, you have assembled the drawing and all of the components are in their respective um, positions and in their operational positions or should i say functional positions so basically that's how to make i'm gonna stop this video now so that you can assimilate thank you